let's begin. So unless your company has just grown large enough to become an applicable large employer, everyone should be familiar with the 1095C form. Um, it's been largely unchanged since 2015, but the IRS did add ICHRA reporting for 2020. Um, this includes a field to report an employee's age. Um, line 17 for the zip codes, and then a few line 16, uh, new line 16 codes um, specifically for ICHRA. Um, by the way, those stand for uh, Individual Coverage Health Reimbursement Arrangement. I wouldn't call these common yet, but they're getting more popular, and we do handle this functionality. Okay, this is Passport's interface. Um, we've designed it to resemble the 1095C, but how do you get all these validated codes in here without one at a time entry or a crazy 100 column spreadsheet? Well, we give you three primary tools uh, for ACA. An employee import, you can kind of see this spreadsheet in the background. It's basic stuff like employee name, address, social, and uh, hire and termination dates. Um, then we have a custom generator for ACA codes and a mass update utility, which lets you update data such as a contribution amount for all or um, just part of your full-time employees, uh, maybe even just a single department. Okay, now that we have a little foundation, let's get into the possible sticking points as you're preparing to file for 2021. Um, Identifying full-time employees. If you expect a new hire to average 30 hours a week or more, then you should offer them coverage within 90 days. If you're not sure, the IRS has rules called the look back method and you can measure for up to 12 months and take a 13th month to look at the results and decide. Here we can see that measuring in red for each new employee starting the month after their hire date and then an administrative month after 12 measurement uh, months in yellow, and then a stability phase in green. And then you might also notice the pink bars uh, underneath where eventually everyone gets rolled into a common measurement cycle. And that's called, we call that the standard measurement period. Okay, and this is how that works. Hours for all ongoing employees are measured together. We evaluate just once a year, right before your plan start month, and then your stability phase in green um, coincides with your insurance plan year, which may or may not be a calendar year. So, and you can see that cycle just repeats over and over. You measure, you go into an administration, administrative phase, and then you're in your stability phase. While you're in there, you're measuring already for the next cycle and it just keeps looping, so you're always in a stability phase. And next, um, because the affordability standards are adjusted each year, we wanna make sure that offers are considered affordable. For 2021, that meant 9.83% uh, of their safe harbor income. And by the way, that percentage is going down to 9.61% in 2022, which, while that percentage goes down, that means the employee share needs to be lower and potentially the employer might need to cover a higher um, level of contribution to make that affordable. Uh, going back to our maintenance screen for a moment, Passport validates all code combinations to make sure you can't uh, choose something that doesn't make sense. But there are a couple things I wanna mention since even though they may be allowed, they might be conveying the wrong picture to the IRS. Uh, line 16, those are the codes down here. This answers the question, what happened as a result of the offer code from line 14? The IRS lists blank as a valid option and it is, but in practice you should always have an actual code in there. The confusion usually results from someone who was offered but waived coverage. And for those, you have the 2F, 2G, and 2H codes. Uh, but the wording in the IRS documentation is a bit unclear. But the inference um, is that the employee waived, whereas leaving line 16 blank would typically be interpreted as the offer not being affordable. 
So I'll remind you that the line 17 zip code is only used for the ICHRA plans, but if you do choose one of those line 14 ICHRA codes, which you can see some of them down here, starting with uh, 1L through 1U, um, our software will automatically populate the company or employee's home address zip code that corresponds to that code. Um, and by the way, these codes are only enabled if you have um, the software checked that you use ICHRA. ICHRA. Otherwise, it just keeps all the clutter away and won't even display those codes. Um, if there is another a zip code aberration that doesn't fit um, for a given month, you are allowed to override them as well, even though they're pre-populated. Okay, we talked about affordability earlier, but as for line 15 contributions, remember that it's not what the employee is actually paying. It doesn't matter if they have a deluxe plan or coverage for the entire family. The IRS wants to know what the lowest employee share of employee-only coverage that they could have chosen. And finally, deadlines. The IRS has extended the 1095C employee copy deadline 30 days this year to March 2nd uh, instead of January 31st. And if you're a paper filer with the IRS, the postmark deadline remains February 28th, and electronic filers still have until March 31st. Um, our software supplies you with the electronic test files you need in order to get your own transmitter control code or TCC. But we also offer services, um, including a complete start to finish option we call full service. And for those who can do all their own prep, but just don't want to jump through all the IRS registration hoops, we have uh, something we call proxy submission service, and we can do that, uh, that last mile transmission for you.